I've got two great pussies here. Cats. Well, I've got one cat here and I've got another one there. Yes, yes, I agree. And they both have the R-Line oh, equipment level because they both have black eyes and black feet, as you can see. So they both look quite nice. And uh, we went to get these cats in Salzburg. So I'll tell you how they were on the highway. If you're driving long distances, it's nice having a quiet, comfortable car that hopefully doesn't drink too much. When I was at the uh, Volkswagen T-Cross presentation, or the preview, they were talking about how they designed it and all the shapes and everything, but my cameraman didn't quite like that. Uh, he said, wait a second, that's not true. We know that Volkswagens are designed with a reference of those uh, Maersk containers for the you know shipping across the oceans. But despite the fact that he himself has a Passat, which he says is designed after a container, um, he likes this car. He says this is the only Volkswagen that's designed by designers, not engineers. And it's true. Arteon, especially in this R-Line look, has some very nice and aggressive shapes. The test model had the brilliant pearl white color, which, in combination with the black alloys and plastics, creates quite the contrast. The optionally darker rear windows also add to the whole image. The car looks quite dangerous. LED lights at the rear and, yes, fake exhaust pipes. There's fewer contrasts in the interior, as everything is mostly black. With the R-Line steering wheel and digital instruments, the car earns a few more pluses. They fortunately didn't forget about USB and 12-volt connectors. A new infotainment system looks great while in the showroom. Afterwards, it will require almost daily wiping with a microcloth. Of course, say goodbye to physical buttons. The seats can be wrapped in cloth or leather, optionally they can be heated and the driver massaged. There's one thing we have to say right at the beginning. This is a Passat, a Volkswagen Passat with a makeup. It, it's the same, but it, it looks good outside. But here's another interesting thing. At least for people that will be buying this car, that's probably pretty important. You will get noticed a lot. And I mean a lot as in all the time, especially if there aren't a lot of Arteons around where you live. I kid you not, people watch you all the time, whether they're younger people or older people. I've had 
kids yeah thanks a lot I've had kids uh, look at the car and point at it I've had uh, older people turn around and keep looking I've had couples tug at each other and going look look at that car how beautiful that looks and it is it looks I, I would say it looks pretty fantastic on the outside especially with the R-Line uh, package which makes it more aggressive inside on the other hand it's a Passat I've got a Passat steering wheel okay now it's an R-Line steering wheel I've got a Passat uh, you know gear shifter I've got this uh, big infotainment screen and so on but that's not necessarily a, good, a bad thing. I mean, you know, the interior is quite nice. Just don't expect something radical. Because I test cars by obviously driving them in the driver's seat, I often ask either a friend or more often my mother to uh, sit beside me or at the back and tell me what she thinks about the car. And because she has really zero interest in cars, I kind of feel that she has more of a more of an important opinion because of that if she says it's interesting then it should really be interesting so what she said about this car I mean what she says generally about cars is that they're boring she says that most of them look the same and they're boring and <laughs> I always roll my eyes and say you know that's not true but for this car she said this is a really pretty good-looking car so even she liked it not only that when she sat in the back in the back on the back seats she said wow I feel like I'm on a cruise liner and of course she meant that in a good way because um, she said there's so much space in the back she said are, are you sitting comfortably she was sitting behind me are you sitting comfortably are you really squashed behind the steering wheel and I said no I've got plenty of space and she had so much space she said this is a really great feeling. Uh, she didn't like the black uh, ceiling. Of course, it would be nicer in something lighter, in a lighter color, so you have more of a spacious feeling. But she really enjoyed the spaciousness in the back. And she said, I wouldn't mind a car like this. It looks good, it drives good, and it's very comfortable in the back. I could talk endlessly about how comfortable this car is to drive, but I'd rather take a look at a few of the details like uh, the leather seats for example the leather seats in this one they're very comfortable uh, but it is black leather and of course that means in the warmer seasons right now it's we're coming up to summer if you park somewhere and leave the car there in the sun it's going to get very hot and when you sit down it's gonna be uh, uh, my uh, my behind is cooking you'll be like a pig on a roast or a roasting pig and uh, as far as I know, this car does not have optionally ventilated seats, which I think personally is almost a must if you're getting leather and if you leave, uh, live in warmer climates. So, oh well, that's up to you, of course. You've got this big panoramic roof, of course, which you can uh, open and close, and you've got this mesh over the top, which I think is quite a good idea because otherwise the car gets even hotter. And you've got this bigger infotainment screen, which now does not have any physical buttons anymore, which is lovely, not. Because you're driving, and then let's say, let's say I, I have the navigation on like this, and I'm driving, and I want to go to, I don't know, I want to look for a different radio station, so I have to press on the menu button. Of course, I have to look at it because it's a touch menu button. It's not a physical one. And then I have to go to radio, make sure I press the radio button on the touch screen and then scroll through. So it, it's a bit of a hassle and it's not very nice or safe because you have to keep looking down. Yes, you've got some physical buttons here on the steering wheel where you can change your you know, volume and other things, but it's just why just give me some physical buttons so you might want to go for the smaller infotainment screen which is a lot cheaper as well and you'll get physical buttons there well one thing that's very nice though especially if you listen to a lot of music from your phone via bluetooth for example is that you can listen to your music and then simply go uh, like this with your hands you hear that Right now I'm just going through the menus because I have no music on. But this gesture works very well. 
and it works through some of the menus and I think the radio and also, like I said, the Bluetooth music. And it's excellent. I, I know you have buttons here to change tracks as well, which, you know, but if you're in a, in a pinch, you can just use this and it works a lot better than the stupid BMW gesture system where you have to keep doing like this uh, so you change the volume and then sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works after 10 seconds and oh my god, why is it so loud all of a sudden? And pretty much at the end, if anyone's watching you, all it looks like is that you're doing this. I'm crazy. So yeah, this is better. There's one more hidden ace this car has and it's under there, under the bonnet or under the hood, if you're American. Um, it's the engine, of course. This car not only offers the more boring 150 horsepower diesel, but also offers the 190 horsepower diesel, which is under this, uh, or in this car, and the 241, which is excellent. I've already tested both a while ago, the 240 and the 190, but this 190 always surprises me because it has a combination of both power and good fuel consumption. With the 240, yes, it's a lot of power, it's fun, this and that, but it can be quite thirsty. With this one, we went to Salzburg and back, so it was around... 600 kilometers altogether, let's say, over highways, and the average consumption, is the sun in your eyes? It probably is, right? And the average consumption was 5.4 kilometers per 100, uh, 5.4 liters per 100 kilometers, which for an engine like this, with plenty of torque and power, I think is quite a good result. So you have plenty of overtaking power, Okay, right now I'm at a limiter at 130, but you've got plenty of power to overtake or do whatever, and you still only use 5.4 liters per 100 kilometers. Before this, I was driving along some towns and some slower roads economically, and I got 5.0 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's, that's pretty darn good. So if you're buying a car like this, forget the 150 horsepower diesel if you want to use less fuel, get this one. This one has more power, it's gonna work less, it's gonna have to work less, and um, you're gonna use less fuel at the same time. It's a pretty fantastic result, I would say. And also, on the highways, this car is just very nice. Despite the 20-inch alloys, it's, it's comfortable, it drives nice, it coasts nice. Yeah, I like it. The base Arteon starts at 35,500 euros. For the one with the most powerful petrol engine, with all-wheel drive, automatic transmission and practically all optional extras, your wallet will be lighter for 69,000 euros. Okay. 